So as Hamid mentioned, my name is Zaid Hamouda. I'm a PhD student at the University of Oregon. And our paper is reducing certified regression to certified classification for general poisoning attacks. So I assume most folks are familiar with data poisoning, but as a very quick review, in the training set, there's gonna be two types of instances, clean or instances that are from the true data distribution. And we're gonna allow arbitrary poison instances. So these are gonna have arbitrary feature vectors and arbitrary labels. And then when that's used to train a model F, we expect the test instances X will be mispredicted because of that poison. And so to formalize what we mean by certified regression against poisoning, we wanna certify pointwise robustness R, a guarantee on the number of instances that can be inserted or deleted from the training set with the model prediction F of X still remaining within two user specified constants, alpha and beta. And specifically when we talk about pointwise robustness guarantees, we're certifying each test prediction individually. So we're gonna be able to determine which test instances are more fragile under poisoning and which are more robust. In the case of this talk, we're gonna focus on a specific type of regression, specifically an, a one-sided upper bound. It's rather easy to show that the other two cases, a two-sided bound with alpha and beta and a one-sided bound with just alpha simplifies to the one-sided upper bound case. And so the structure of this talk is gonna be a bit weird. In our paper, we propose six certified regressors but we're almost not gonna talk about them at all in this talk. Rather, what we're gonna focus on is that reduction from regression to voting-based classification. What we really see is the reduction is the key contribution of our paper and the specific methods we propose are more of a proof of concept of that reduction and how it can achieve good performance in practice. So one of the trends we've seen over the last five to 10 years is a plethora of specialized, robust regressors against both outliers and poisoning. Unfortunately, these regressors suffer from a few of the same weaknesses. First, they often make strong assumptions about the data distribution. They may assume things like sparsity or low rank. They may even assume specific data distributions like a linear data distribution with arbitrary Gaussian noise. They often assume very low models that aren't very expressive like linear models or they provide only distributional guarantees. In other words, they don't specify pointwise robustness or give insight into the prediction um, robustness of individual predictions. And the problem with strong assumptions with regression and with adversary robustness, excuse me, is that when those assumptions don't hold, or in particular, when those assumptions aren't testable, you don't know the values of your guarantees. Because the, the guarantees only hold when those assumptions hold, once those assumptions evaporate, your guarantees do as well. And so our goal was to come up with provably robust regressors that are general, meaning we wanna make no assumptions about the data distribution, we want to use any submodel architecture. So if linear models work well, you can use those. If decision trees are better, for instance, for tabular data, that's also going to be fine, as well as neural networks. And last, we want to avoid what we call the reinvention of the wheel. Rather than keep coming up with specialized methods, we want our approach to be more evergreen. In other words, we want to be able to have a way to be consistently state-of-the-art with minimal effort. And I know that might sound weird. How can you be consistently state-of-the-art? But we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So a bit of a detour, before we talk about certified regression, we wanna review what we mean by certified classification. Over the last year and a half to two years, certified poisoning classifiers have shown a lot of promise. And they have a lot of the same strengths that we're looking for, for our certified regressors. First, these certified classifiers make no dis data distribution assumptions. Two, they're model architecture agnostics, so you're gonna be able to use decision trees or neural networks. And they have really strong empirical performance. So for instance, for MNIST, you're able to certify 65% of predictions up to about 1% poison, and for CIFAR-10, about 15% of predictions up to 0.1% poison. And all of these um, certified poisoning classifiers have the same basic structure. We've simplified it a bit here, but the basic idea is you start with some test instance XTE, and you run it through a block we term a votes generator. So all of these methods are voting-based, and they turn that instance into a multi-set of votes. Here we're showing that multi-set for binary classification where zero is the negative class and one is the positive class. And from that multi-set of votes, you're gonna get two things. First, the prediction is always gonna be the plurality label or the most common label in that multi-set. And that's gonna be your prediction F of X. From that multi-set, you're also gonna run it through a block we call the robustness certifier. That robustness certifier is what calculates your robustness guarantee R, the number of instances that can be inserted or deleted from the training set and guaranteeing the prediction. 
So all of these maybe five to 10 methods that have been proposed in the last year only really differ in two blocks, how they generate the votes and how they turn that set of votes into robustness guarantees. So let's take a very simple example. Perhaps the simplest of the certified poisoning classifiers is based on nearest neighbor methods. This is from a paper um, from GI et al at AAAI 22. And say we wanna guarantee classification robustness for nearest neighbors, our neighborhood of K equals five is just gonna be our multi-set of votes. Where here we have four labels for label, we have four votes for label zero and one vote for label one. And we'll use this as a running example, oh, just a little bit of a leg. We'll use this as a running example throughout this talk. Obviously, if you wanna change this prediction, the plurality label is label zero and at least two votes in this multi-set are gonna to need to change to perturb the prediction. So if two votes need to change and each vote corresponds to one training instance, you know you have a guarantee of one, right? Because you don't have to insert or delete two instances from the training set to perturb that prediction. So we have a guarantee of one. We see a similar thing, but with a slightly additional bit of complexity with ensembles. So this is from a paper of Levine and Fazy from I believe iClear 2021. And they train an ensemble of K classifiers, but the key thing they do is they train each of these submodel classifiers on a disjoint set of data, on a disjoint set of the training data. What that means is any inserted or deleted instance from the training set affects at most one submodel prediction. So you're now able to come up with similar bounds for certifying robustness. So imagine we have one test instance, we generate a multi-set of votes, four for label zero, one for label one, and we have the same procedure to certify the robustness. It takes that multi-set of votes and calculates a robustness guarantee of one. Now, talking about that reduction from certified regression to voting-based certified classification. Intuitively, what a reduction does, it allows you to solve a harder problem, say certified regression with real valued votes using an easier algorithm or a problem you know how to readily solve like certified classification. And so we're gonna apply this reduction and you can view this reduction through a different lens. The opposite lens is how do you transform existing certified poisoning classifiers into certified regressors? And if you're able to come up with a standard transformation, you're gonna have two benefits. First, you're gonna inherit the strengths of the certified classifiers. You're gonna inherit the fact that they don't make any distributional assumptions. You're gonna inherit that they're submodel agnostic. But more importantly, what you're gonna have is that we realize that certified classification is much more of interest to the research community than certified regression. And what that has meant that in the last few years, the gap between the methods for regression and classification have really expanded. And in the future, that, that gap is expected to grow. The only way realistically to compress this gap is to tie the two topics together. So that as you make advances in certified classification, you're also simultaneously gonna make advances for certified regression. And what our transformation allows you to do is as each new certified uh, classifier is proposed, if it's voting based with only three small changes, you're gonna be able to turn that into a certified regressor. So our reduction is based on one key insight and that is given any binary multiset, the plurality label and the median of that multiset are gonna have equivalent robustness. So I understand that's not exactly intuitive how you're gonna apply that. So let's try and understand it through a simple example. Here we have a multi-set of five votes between about 2.2 and six. Obviously the median is the third largest value. And let's say we wanna specify an upper bound on this median of somewhere between five and six. So what we're gonna first do is binarize this multi-set. So this should look exactly like the example we just saw. You're gonna have four, four votes for everything below beta or the negative class and one vote for the positive class. And we know from the examples we've looked at that the robustness of this case is one. In other words, if we talk about this in terms of real values, you're gonna to have to change at least two elements in this multi-set to change the median above beta. In other words, if you use these ideas, if you look at the robustness from a binarized perspective, you're gonna be able to get guarantees on the real value. And what that's gonna allow you to do is to then easily transform, transform excuse me, certified poisoning classifiers into certified regressors. So we mentioned that it's gonna be three specific steps to make this transformation. First, you're gonna to have to change your votes generator. Rather than generating votes that are binary labels, you just generate votes that are real values. 
What does that mean in practice? For instance, if you're using KNN, you just change your scikit-learn KNN classifier to a KNN regressor. Same thing with submodels. If you're using submodels, you use submodels that are regressors instead of classifiers. Often one or two lines of code. Also, we noticed that before our decision function was the plurality label. Plurality label doesn't make sense for regression, but we already know that the robustness of median and plurality label are identical. So we're gonna be able to replace the plurality label as our decision function by just median. Lastly, one of the key bits of intelligence of certified classifiers is in how they generate the robustness guarantees. Ideally, we want to change that the least. That's probably the hardest bit to change. So all we need to do is apply that insight we just saw, where we know that binary classification or uh, binary classification has equivalent robustness as regression if we binarize based on that upper value threshold of beta. So all we need to do is to take that real value set binarize it by everything less than beta, and we can use our robustness certification algorithm unchained. So in practice, what this means is that's three simple steps to transform uh, or to reduce certified regression to voting-based classification. First, you generate real valued votes. Again, very easy. You just change one or two lines of code, use median as your decision function, and you binarize the real valued votes to calculate the robustness guarantees. So in our paper, we actually apply this reduction to generate a suite of certified regressors. Two are based on nearest neighbor methods from Jia et al. Two are based on ensemble classifiers from Levine and Fazy and Wang et al. And we also propose two state-of-the-art certified binary classifiers in this paper. And then we use our reduction to create even better regressors. The reason we propose these improved classifiers is to show that as new certified methods are proposed in the future, if they're voting-based, we're going to be able to get that consistent state-of-the-art approach that we talked about, again, with minimal effort, just making those three small changes. So I'm only going to talk briefly about our empirical evaluation. In short, we evaluate five regression data sets and one binary classification data set. Obviously, binary classification and regression are essentially the same thing, where in the binary classification case, you just have two possible output values, negative one and one. Certified accuracy is our metric. It's the percentage of correctly classified test instances given alpha and beta that have a certified robustness above some threshold. So in short, applying our reduction in regression, we're able to certify about half of predictions up to 1% poison and a third of predictions up to 4% poison. And in terms of which method performs better, there's not really one simple answer. Nearest neighbor methods tend to have um, larger maximum robustness guarantees. They're able to certify larger Rs but typically are lower accuracy. So one last thing I wanna take, uh, give as a takeaway. We titled our paper, Reducing Certified Regression to Certified Classification for General Poisoning Attacks. The reason we chose this title is that most of our evaluation and our explanation covers poisoning classifiers because that's where we're seeing a lot of the certified literature going in the recent past, but this isn't specifically a limitation. Our reduction also works for evasion attacks. There's a recent paper that applies this reduction to randomized spoofing, specifically randomized ablation for sparse adversarial attacks. So in short, anytime you're doing certified classification and it's voting based, in most cases that we've seen, you're gonna be able to apply a reduction using just those three simple steps. Thanks very much. <laughs>